In this video, we're going to talk about some of important considerations for choosing initial ventilator settings for the RRT board exam. Uh, specifically, we'll be discussing the tidal volume, rate, FiO2, PEEP, and the mode. So let's go ahead and start with a practice question that you're likely to see on the exam. Uh, here we have a 65 inch, 105 kilogram male patient who is apneic following a drug overdose and requires mechanical ventilation. What initial ventilator settings should the respiratory therapist recommend? So the first setting that we recommend you look at is the tidal volume. And this is really a favorite of the MBRC. Uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong when you're choosing it. And it's also just a very important uh, setting uh, for your patient and on the exam. Um, you know, if you, if you set the tidal volume too high, it could cause irreversible lung damage by over distending the alveoli. And if you set it too low, it could underventilate the patient. So I'm sure most of you have had six to eight mLs per kilogram of predicted body weight kind of drilled into you at school. Um, this is the recommended initial setting. Uh, there are occasions where you may use four to six mLs per kilogram on the initial settings, but you know, because the patient has not been on the ventilator yet, uh, we're not going to have any evidence that they have stiff lungs. Um, we're not going to have a PF ratio. We're not going to have uh, plateau pressure. Um, so typically six to eight mLs per kilogram of predicted body weight is going to be your starting point. Now, the most important thing, if you learn nothing else from this video, is that you must calculate the patient's predicted body weight do not use the uh, weight given in the exam question to calculate the tidal volume range that you need for your patient. Um, that's a sure way to, uh, to fail the exam. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and calculate the patient's predicted body weight in this question. So there's a lot of different ways to calculate the predicted body weight. Uh, we prefer this one in particular, uh, which is for males, 50 kilograms plus 2.3. And inside the parentheses, we're going to have the patient's height in inches minus 60. And so following along through this equation, uh, we're going to have uh, do the work in the parentheses first. And that'll give us um, 65 minus 60, uh, which equals 5. And then we're going to multiply the 2.3 by the 5 to get 11.5 and then add it to the 50 kilograms for a predicted body weight of 61.5 kilograms. And so now we're just going to multiply the 61.5 kilograms by the low end of the tidal volume range of 6 that we're going to use. And then also we're going to do it by 8. And so when we do that, that gives us our tidal volume range that would be acceptable for this patient uh, based on their predicted body weight. And the answer to that is anywhere between 369 mLs or 492 mLs. So you can see using, this, uh, using the tidal volume first, we've can basically rule out, I think, three of these four potential answers. Obviously, you don't want to stop there. You want to look at all the other metrics in the uh, possible answers. Um, but that's a great starting point to kind of, you know, rule out uh, the incorrect answers. Okay, so now we're going to move on to choosing the mandatory rate. Uh, and we recommend choosing between 10 to 20 breaths per minute for the initial uh, respiratory rate. There's two caveats to that that you should keep in mind, however. Uh, for example, if the patient has COPD or severe asthma, uh, these patients typically need longer times to exhale. Uh, so you may not want to use the rate of 20. You may want to use a, a, something on the lower end, closer to 10 or 12 breaths per minute. You also want to consider, are they already on a low tidal volume? If they are on a low tidal volume, say 4 to 6 mLs per kilogram, uh, you may not want to use a low rate in conjunction with that. So you may want to kind of raise you know, that rate up towards the higher end of the 10 to 20 uh, breaths per minute. All right, so let's talk about FiO2 next. Uh, we recommend using between 30 to 60 as a general guideline. Uh, but there's three caveats or three things I want you to keep in mind. And the first is you always want to meet or exceed the FiO2 when you place the patient on the ventilator that they were, that they were already receiving. Uh, so if they were on a 50% venti mask, you would want to start them on 50% on the ventilator. The second thing you should consider is, were they a postcode? Were they just placed on the ventilator uh, following an emergency? 
And so in those cases, post-code blue, post-emergency, you want to begin right away with 100% FiO2, and then you can wean it down as you're able to. Uh, the third thing to keep in mind is patients with COPD. Although there's currently debate about whether you know, high oxygen levels can cause oxygen-induced hypoventilation with patients with COPD, there is debate about that. But in the NBRC hospital, there is no debate, okay? You want to use the lowest FiO2 necessary for COPD patients to keep their sets at least 85%. All right, let's talk about PEEP next, positive end expiratory pressure. Uh, we recommend setting it between two to six for your initial settings. Um, however, if the patient was on BiPAP or CPAP prior to going on the ventilator, uh, what you would wanna do is match the EPAP um, or the CPAP level for their PEEP. Obviously, you're gonna use uh, much higher peeps down the road in, in certain patients, particularly patients with ARDS. But remember, we're just talking about initial ventilator settings uh, right now. So two to six is a great starting point. That should uh, do you just fine on the exam. Um, and if they're on BiPAP or NIV, just go ahead and match the uh, peep on the ventilator to the EPAP if they were on BiPAP or the CPAP level. Okay, so let's talk about modes next. Uh, modes are a source of anxiety for a lot of students. They're gonna use just real basic uh, mechanical ventilation modes, volume control and pressure control. And within volume control, uh, we're gonna choose the tidal volume and the pressure could be variable. And we're gonna be aware of that and we're gonna choose the right tidal volumes for our patients. Um, you know, if we decide to choose pressure control, you can do that, that's fine. But just remember, you'll have to choose an inspiratory pressure. Uh, we recommend starting between 20 to 30 centimeters of water pressure for your initial inspiratory pressure. But the important thing obviously would be to, to you know, make sure that the exhale tidal volume when you're using pressure control is something appropriate for the patient's predicted body weight. Now, one more thing I'd like you to consider about modes is uh, you're going to probably run into SIMV quite a bit. That's pretty common on the exam. Um, it can be used in volume control mode or pressure control mode. Uh, however, the important thing is with SIMV, you're going to have to supplement the uh, patient's spontaneous breaths by choosing pressure support. Okay, so don't you generally don't want to use a pressure support of zero. Okay, you want to set that at least five to ten centimeters of water pressure. So that's it guys, a quick rundown on how to choose initial ventilator settings for the RRT board exam. If you want more information or you have questions, check out our cheat sheets for a quick reference.